Radiation levels 100 to 1,000 times above normal have been detected in the seabed near the damaged Fukushima Daiichi plant. TEPCO carried out its first contamination analysis of the ocean floor on Friday using samples from two points 20 to 30 meters deep. Samples collected about 15 kilometers north of the plant contained 1,400 becquerels of cesium-137 per kilogram and 1,300 becquerels of cesium-134. Others taken around 20 kilometers south of the plant contained 1,200 becquerels each of cesium-137 and cesium-134 per kilogram. The samples from the two points were also found to be contaminated with iodine-131. TEPCO says it is difficult to evaluate the readings as there are no official limits for these substances, but it will continue to monitor radiation levels and their impact on seafood. The accident at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant has put a spotlight on the Japanese government's relationship with the private sector. The Ministry of Economy, Trade and Industry responded on Tuesday to mounting criticism over amakudari. It refers to a practice that sees bureaucrats retire and take jobs at companies they once supervised. The industry ministry says over the past 50 years, a total of 68 top bureaucrats have retired to executive posts at electric power firms. The ministry surveyed 12 firms on the number of former career track government workers who the companies have employed as executives or advisors. It found that 13 former top bureaucrats currently hold senior positions at power companies. The ministry is urging its senior officials and those at energy and nuclear power related agencies to voluntarily refrain from accepting post-retirement jobs at power companies. Ain't that polite, nice American girl. The Japanese government has released data projecting the spread of radioactive substances from the crippled Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant. It withheld the information for weeks because of fears it could spark panic. The science ministry uses a computer system called Speedy to predict how radiation will spread depending on weather and geographical conditions. The government released about 5,000 bits of data on Tuesday showing hourly predictions from March 11th. The information can be found on the websites of some government ministries and the Nuclear Safety Commission. The data was calculated on the assumption that radioactive substances are being released at a rate of one becquerel per hour. The projection for 10 p.m. on March 15th shows radiation flowing off the screen to the northeast. That's when an explosion occurred at the number two reactor. The Secretary General of the Joint Task Force, set up by the government and Tokyo Electric Power Company, apologized on Monday for the delay in releasing the data. Goshi Hoshino said he now believes panic can be avoided if proper explanations are offered. Well, that's probably the problem. If you knew it worked, actually got rid of boils, you'd probably have no problem selling it. Nobody in advertising wants to get rid of boils, Julia. They're good little money spinners. All we want to do is offer hope of getting rid of them. And that's where I'm blocked. Where Hosono promised to release data promptly in the future. Tokyo Electric Power Company is developing a device to remove radioactive substances from seawater. It hopes to install it in the Pacific Ocean near the troubled Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant at the end of this month. TEPCO plans to fill a metal container with zeolite, a mineral that absorbs radioactive materials. The company will use a pump to continuously inject seawater into the container. Radiation levels have remained high in waters around the Fukushima plant, even after TEPCO managed to plug a leak of contaminated water four weeks ago. On Monday, 5,800 times the official limit of radioactive iodine-131 was detected in samples collected near a water intake for the number two reactor. TEPCO says it can't deny the possibility that contaminated water is still leaking. The utility has already set up silt fence barriers and thrown sandbags filled with zeolite into the sea. It hopes to set up the new device inside a silt fence to decontaminate the seawater. The Japanese embassy in Seoul has held a meeting to ease concerns about radioactive contamination of food from Japan. The meeting explained the situation at the Fukushima Daiichi plant and what is being done to control the nuclear accident. 
More than 20 people from trading firms and other companies attended Tuesday's gathering. Embassy officials pointed out that Japan has thorough safety checks in place for food and water. They said that produce is not being shipped if it contains radioactive substances above permissible levels. Because I got to tell you the truth, folks. I got to tell you the truth. When it comes to bullshit... Some of the participants wanted to know if Japanese firms are operating as usual. We need a concrete time frame for when things will return to normal. No normal is a better description for the post-crisis world. This will help South Korean businesses to ease concerns and make alternative plans if necessary. French President Nicolas Sarkozy has repeated his stance on promoting nuclear energy during a visit to the country's largest nuclear power station. Lorsque nous ne ferons pas après l'accident de Fukushima, nous ne renoncerons pas à la filière nucléaire. Confirme le choix stratégique du nucléaire pour l'indépendance de la France. Je confirme que la priorité à la sûreté au plus haut niveau de Sarkozy visited the Graveline nuclear power station in northern France on Tuesday and was briefed by plant officials on safety measures. It was his first trip to a French nuclear plant since the Fukushima accident. France depends on nuclear power for about 80% of its electricity. A French opinion poll conducted after the Fukushima incident shows that nearly 60% of the respondents strongly or moderately oppose nuclear energy. Sarkozy's visit to the nuclear plant is seen as an attempt to curb anti-nuclear sentiment by stressing the importance of nuclear energy.